I bought a $210 gaming PC secondhand, thinking that I scored the deal of a lifetime. But the question is, did we get scammed again? Can we rescue this nightmare and bring this nine-year-old PC back to life? Let's dive into the chaos. Are you ready? I don't even know what the guy looks like. <laughs> gonna get scammed or what? <laughs> We're gonna get scammed. <laughs> okay, so we've just pulled into Macca's. We're about to meet the bloke. Okay, you see he's on his way. Here to pick up the two PCs, $650. It worked out to be a good deal. We got $150 off for buying both. So fingers crossed and we'll be back when he's here. Here we go guys. Transaction is about to take place. Oh, it looks good. Oh, it's starting to rain, I think. Uh, yep. Let's go get a drink. Woo! So we just left McDonald's, had to get my drink for the 2.5 hour trip home. We've got the PCs and the guys, they seemed really nice. They had these PCs for about 10 years from back in high school and they've built a new PC for themselves and upgraded. The awesome thing about these PCs is they have a GTX 980, which was a high-end graphics card back in the day. And I had that inside of my desk PC. So it brings back a lot of memories. Let's continue with the drive home only oh, two hours to go. So we've arrived back with both the PCs and I have to say this one is the smelliest and dirtiest of the two. In fact, both of them only have one foot for some reason. I'm not sure why, but we'll get that fixed up. The smell is very pungent, so I can't wait to get this fully cleaned up. The two PCs came in at 650 Australian dollars. They wanted 1,000 and I got them down. That equates to 420 US dollars, which means 210 US dollars per PC. Now this has a GTX 984 gigabyte version inside so that covers about half that cost right there and so with everything else in the build as long as it all works we should make a decent little profit there and that's the thing we don't know if it works yet the first PC we did have some broken parts so I'm not sure if we were scammed or not only time will tell so let's get it all cleaned up This has to be the dirtiest case we've ever, ever cleaned up on the channel. I mean, even the ones with liquid spilt everywhere, none of them have been as dirty as this one. I mean, there is literally a civilization living at the front of this case with an unidentified species of something there. There is so much wool that I was prepared to roll it into a ball and see if my nan could knit me a sweater. But guys, I don't think that's gonna be possible because the stench of this PC is incredible. They must have been smokers or something. Now the case itself is actually in pretty good condition. I don't see any wear or tear marks. The only thing I've noticed is it is missing its case feet. And apart from all the dust, I think this is gonna clean up really nice. The cables at the back also have a little bit of dust. That's just gonna require a simple clean over. And so what I think we're gonna do is get the blower in there, remove as much dust as possible, and then we'll give it a hose out. And then we'll put some chemicals on it to get rid of that stench and get rid of any staining. In all my years cleaning PCs, this has to be the best case cleaner that we have ever had. Now the case has been sitting there drying for about a day, so it may have some surface dust on it that has settled overnight, but that's easy to remove. Apart from that, I can't see any scuff marks or anything over the surface. There is no more dust there. It looks brand new. I mean, if I opened a brand new case and put them side by side, I wouldn't be able to tell the difference apart from the missing feet, of course. Speaking of feet, I, I went to the local hardware store and I found these door stops and it just happens to be the perfect height for it. So now it's nice and level. So I've got two door stops on the bottom as the feet. And it's good because the bottom of them are rubber, so it's not gonna move. But yeah, I'm super excited about how this case turned out, especially for a nine year old case. This motherboard is probably one of the worst that we have ever serviced over our years of cleaning PCs. The motherboard is nine years old and we have dust in every single crevice. And because of the stock CPU cooler, it was pulling in so much dust around the CPU socket, it is absolutely loaded. The 
CPU also has flaky thermal paste that didn't have a fantastic coverage. So I'm glad that we got to it now. There's dust all over the PCIe lanes. That is from sitting there for nine plus years. Even the RAM slots, they've got dust caked in them. We're gonna have to get the toothbrush in there. There's nothing else that's gonna fit in these small crevices. I mean, even the heat sinks, there's just so much dust in there. And all of these little connections down here, there's fur and everything growing on there. So we're gonna have to spend some time on this motherboard and clean it right out. I mean, even the back IO, completely full of dust. So we'll remove the cover, we'll strip it right down. We'll make sure that we get this motherboard looking brand new. was one of the dirtiest mud boards that we have cleaned on the channel. It has cleaned up really well. Don't see any scuff marks or anything anymore. You remember how much dust was around the CPU socket. It is completely clean and we can finally now see what CPU we have, which is the i5 6600. RAM slots, they're looking brand new. There's no dust around there. We also got all of the dust out from all of these pins and sockets down the bottom there. We completely removed the IO cover. We got that all sorted. Got in and amongst all of these heat sinks with the toothbrush and we cleaned it up to look brand new. The fans, they're always the worst part of a build. However, these ones are actually a lot cleaner than some that we have previously dealt with. But what I really don't like about fans is that the dust sticks to the blades and a lot of them seem to be really sticky. It's kind of like it's got an oil or a tar or something on it that all of the dust sticks to, especially on this side of the fan, as you guys can see. If you have any idea why that happens, let me know in the comments. I think it's got to do with maybe a smoker's PC or something like that. Something like that. But we're gonna have to get in here with the toothbrush. That'll let us get in and amongst all of these little gaps. But I might blow them out first with the leaf blower to try and get rid of as much dust as possible. You guys saw how gross these fans were. They smelt disgusting, they were sticky, and we've got them cleaned right up. They look brand new. A little bit of scuffing around the sticker, but it's just a sticker at the end of the day, so there's no harm done to this fan. And not really any scuff marks, wear and tear that I can see apart from that sticker, as I said, and it's actually smelling good now. <laughs> Much like the fans, the CPU cooler is absolutely caked with dust, and it's very oily. Very smelly. I'm hoping that the toothbrush bristles are long enough to get in between all of these fins here because there's so much dust in there. But if not, I do have a pipe cleaner, which may also fit in there. So either way, we should be able to get the job done. The thermal paste at the back is really in need of a change. It is dry, it is crusty. There wasn't good coverage over the CPU, so I could imagine there were some hot spots on the CPU. Not to worry though, we'll apply some fresh paste. The stock cooler was absolutely filled with dust, grease, and grime. This fan actually pulls air in, so it's no wonder it was completely full and it made the CPU socket on the motherboard completely dirty. Now I did get the toothbrush in there. We removed all of that grease and grime and dust and it's honestly cleaned up really nicely. Now it is an older i5 CPU, so I think the Intel stock cooler is gonna go back on there. I don't really have another stock cooler on hand that really makes sense. But if I do get one in, I'm actually gonna upgrade the CPU cooler before I end up giving away the PC 
or selling it for a profit. Let's also see what the benchmark temperatures say. Now this is a Corsair RM750X power supply, which is good and reliable. It only has surface dust. There's actually little to no dust on the inside, but I'm still gonna get the leaf blower in there anyway, just to remove any small bits that we can't see. But for the most part, all it needs is a bit of a wipe over. So this is Corsair Vengeance LPX Didia for 16 gigabytes in total, CL13 timings running at 2133 megahertz. And to be honest, it's pretty clean. It just needs a bit of a surface wipe, maybe a little bit of the toothbrush just to loosen up a little bit of dust over on the PCB. But apart from that, there's nothing in it. The hard drive itself is not too bad. This is a two terabyte Seagate hard drive. It does have that stickiness to it, which has obviously allowed all of that dust to stick and coat the top surface of the hard drive. There are also areas on the side and on the back where the dust has built up. And I guess that was because the fan is trying to blow dust in and straight onto the hard drive in these spaces. So I think if we get the leaf blower and then we just give it a wipe down, this should be enough to clean this right up. The hard drive was in the direct path of one of our fans and it was collecting a lot of grease and dust, particularly on one side. Now it was a pretty simple fix just by blowing it first and then just wiping the dust off. And it's cleaned up nicely, looks brand new, no scuff marks or anything like that for a nine year old hard drive, which is pretty good. This is a two terabyte drive as well. So they had their operating system on an NVMe 250 gigabytes. And they've got this two terabyte hard drive, I guess for games and things like that. Now our 980 may not look too bad from the front, but I can assure you behind the fans, super dusty. The fins, very dusty. We're gonna have to get the toothbrush in there. There is hair all over the graphics card and the rear of the graphics card. I assume that this PC has been sitting there for a long time and dust has fallen on it while it was plugged in because the top of the back plate has loads of dust. I could also see that the PCB underneath has loads of dust, so we're going to tear this thing fully apart, replace the thermal paste, give it a good clean and make it look brand new. I also know this GPU has not been pulled apart yet for a fresh thermal paste application because the sticker is still intact on the back screw. Always feels good reviving an old GPU. The GTX 980, this is the Asus Strix with a dual fan cooler. And quite honestly, there was a lot of dust stuck in between all of the fins. So we got the toothbrush in there and removed all of that. A lot of dust on the PCB as well. And the thermal paste was absolutely dry. So I've got new paste on here as well, which means I expect much better cooling. The whole IO has been completely cleaned out. It's looking really good. It's looking brand new. So it'll be good to test this out to see how this card actually performs in today's games. Now that everything's completely clean, it's time to rebuild.
it all comes down to this. Does the PC work or were we scammed? I was so worried to said we went through so many boot loops and it's worked. Okay, so I've run into a bit of an issue. I can't get the NVMe to show up and I actually did test this PC prior to cleaning it and I was having the same issue. So it makes me think that the NVMe is faulty. The people couldn't get it to boot and so they sold their PC. I'm not 100% sure of that, but I just cannot get it to show up in any of the boot options. I've got CSM enabled, I've, I've gone through that, I've changed settings. I've done many things to try and get this working, but it looks as if the NVMe may be faulty in some way. However, I guess the positive thing is we are still finding the two terabyte hard drive, so I can go and install Windows on that and it should work. So it's not a huge loss to us anyway. So I think I'm gonna do that. And if any further updates in testing happen, I will let you know. However, we do have a red light on the motherboard just below the NVMe. So I know something is going on there. It's amazing what older parts are still capable of in today's games. I mean, I don't expect a lot from a GTX 980 when it comes to modern games, especially those that are graphically intense, but it just goes to show that you don't need to buy the most expensive hardware to have a good time playing games. This is evident in PUBG 1080p high settings where we were constantly achieving around an average of 60 to 75 FPS. Shadow of the Tomb Raider 1080p high settings, our end average was 61 FPS. We did dip below 60 FPS on some some scenes. And if there's an issue for you, then medium settings might be the sweet spot. GTA 5. 1080p was a breeze for the GTX 980. I also want you to pay attention to the CPU and GPU temps in the top left of the screen because the GPU was constantly sitting around 60 degrees while the CPU, considering it is using a stock cooler, is only around 54 degrees. I wanted to test a modern title, Cyberpunk, just to show what an aged 900 series GPU is capable of. Low settings 1080p, we were able to achieve high 50s to early 60s. Not ideal and honestly, not a game made for this graphics card, but certainly playable. What are you doing? 